So we've got the GitHub stuff going. And to do that demo, we are all in a shared developer tenant called msgraphdemo.microsoft.com. You can go get your own. If you're in um, any of our M365 pages, the developer program is in the top navigation and you can go and join that. This will give you a free Microsoft 365 tenant. And as long as you use it for development um, within a six month range, it basically gets renewed for another six months or maybe it's 12 months and 12 months renewal. One of the two, it explains it in here. We've changed it recently. Um, but the good news is, is you get basically get full M365 tenant with 25 users. Um, and so this whole demo is done within one of those developer tenants. Um, and so we can go in and, you know, I can look at Jeremy's mail and Nicola even went through and put our user profiles in there and different things as well. So that when we're in teams, you know, we can see everyone coming through and have those conversations with Nicola and Beth. Um, so it's really cool for kind of building out a, a developer environment. Now, if I go over to portal.azure.com, um, if I go to the homepage of portal.azure.com, as a developer with the graph or even with Teams and SharePoint and Office, essentially we need to come over into uh, Azure Active Directory. And the first place we tend to train devs to go to is app registrations. And this is where you register your your applications for your own particular tenant um, for our moderator app, which is what we've called this app, but it's not in here. So what are we doing? Well, if I go over to enterprise applications, this is a scenario that's actually quite typical, which is that your tenant, this developer tenant is actually going to be using applications from a lot of different companies. Um, a lot of it's going to come from Microsoft us. And so you can see that even Teams is a, an application that has a unique application ID with certain permissions that it has to your tenant, much as Yammer and OneNote and SharePoint Online, Exchange Online. Don't touch those. Uh, that can cause all sorts of problems. Uh, <laughs> tell your ad administrators, your tenants, not to touch those. Um, it's just stuff that you get for free in this tenant that um, is how we wire everything up. But you can see here that um, I've been testing this with our staging environment of Graph Explorer as well as our production environment of Graph Explorer, which I'm going to cover in a second. And, you know, as an admin, you can go in and see Graph Explorer. And some of the most useful things that your admins or even developers are going to want to do is see like, hey, what permissions does this application have to my tenant? And you can see here that Graph Explorer in this instance doesn't have any admin level permissions to my tenant. But if I look at uh, user permissions here, what you can actually see is that I have a bunch of permissions that I've already consented. And you can see that there is one user that's been doing a lot of this and it's Nicola. And you can see that um, for that particular permission that Jeremy hey, and Nicola have both consented. I'm, I could quite <laughs> happily kick you out of here, Nicola, if you start being bad. So hey, just good luck with the rest that. of the demo then. Good luck with the rest of the demo. <laughs> And so this is really useful uh, as developers being good citizens and building those bridges over to admins in your tenant is to understand this stuff so that you can go talk to your admins when you want to get to the point of building an app in your tenant or maybe with customers admins you talk to, to understand these things and walk them through all these interfaces and send them to documentation and videos that can help them to learn this. Um, the biggest thing we find with customers is that admins could often be that last hurdle of getting an app out the door get them in early because you want them to let them know that they're going to be responsible for approving these things, especially if it requires any kind of admin permissions, which we will need for our moderator app. So if I go over to enterprise applications here and look at the moderator app, um, you'll see that the moderator app has, you know, some user consent permissions here. And this is doing quite a bit where, you know, we're reading the presence information of the user. We're reading, we're having access to their calendar. We're having access to their basic profile. Um, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff with reading and writing to groups, which you can think about as every team. If I go back to my teams, every team, essentially the hand washing and the Contoso teams are, are essentially groups under the covers. And so we need root riot access to all of those teams and doing things like creating online meetings when Nicola created that meeting for each of the breakout groups that was using that permission scope. And so we can define that up front or we can do it in the application and we'll show you decisions we've made with moderator app as we go through it. So in a normal world, I can come here, go to app registrations and I can create the application in this tenant. So I could say moderator test and I can choose to make it for the just this tenant. The one that Nicola built, he actually created the application in a different tenant and he'd marked right. it as a multi-tenant app, right? 
And so when we sign in to the moderator app in either the PWA or the web app or even the Teams app, it, it's using his app registration and his special tenant he has. Yeah, it's a and giraffe tenant. Yep. It's the, the giraffe tenant. But what yep. we want to do is really, you know, create this single tenant one. Now, as developers, we don't always want to be living in the world of the UI. Um, and one thing that we've just launched inside of um, inside of the graph is the ability to look and inspect all this data directly with inside of the graph API. And this used to be on an Azure AD endpoint. And so what you'll be able to see is on the left-hand side inside of Graph Explorer here, which you can get to just by clicking on this link here. This is the new uh, released version. This was in preview for since Ignite. Um, you'll see that we have applications beta. Now this is actually V1, so we, we need to update these samples. Um, and you'll see here that we can actually retrieve a list of the samples um, and go through this and see here are all the different applications that we have within our system. And so, you know, the display name at that one is a demo. And if I scroll down a little bit more, uh, this one is the demo bot. They were the only two applications we actually have uh, within the system right now. But where can we get to, you know, where those um, service principles are, which is those enterprise applications. Unfortunately, in a lot of the cases, like we call them enterprise applications here, but really they're service principles in our API. And so we can actually go get those. So I can come over here and run into the service. You're going to see my typos all day long. Uh, the service principles here, obviously we're formatting that JSON really nicely. And you'll see that, you know, Dynamics Business Central is coming up. If I scroll down a little bit longer, we can see all sorts of things about these applications. Um, oh, that's all the different pieces here. And so this is really nice to be able to go in and kind of grab a lot of the information to see what applications um, and service principles, enterprise applications have been installed in here. Now we can get a little bit more um, clever here. And you know, obviously if I know what the application ID is, um, I can kind of come in here and just grab that from here. Um, I can go through to the screen in the service principles and um, I can just chuck a filter on here uh, of uh, app ID and then equals and then put single quotes and then end my single quotes. And this is just using standard OData to run that. And you'll see now that that's returned back just that one response. And I can see that's the app name is the moderator. And I can see all the different settings for this here inside of it. You can see all of Nicola's Ngrox, please don't use those right now, um, for when it redirects from signing into this application, it needs to know where to send it. And one thing that's often useful is what are the scopes this is using? So that's screen when I come into permissions, right? And so in actual fact, what we need to do is we need to grab the, oop, the object ID of this. So I'm going to grab the ID of this service principle so I can access it directly off of here. And that will essentially give me the same result. But then what I can do is I can go through and I'm not going to type this because I'm trying to be a little bit quick here is if I go to OAuth2 permission grants, if I scroll here, I can start to see for the moderator application, here are all the scope strings that are available for this app. This is super useful. Um, you know, it's a great way of troubleshooting. You can obviously run these things in Postman as well. Um, Nicola, you've been doing a bit of this too with your applications, right? Right, yes. Um, basically what I've been doing in development, this is exactly what I'm doing. Um, but there's a new thing that we're doing, uh, which Daryl Miller, who's jumping in the chat here and trolling already, thank you, Daryl, um, is he's been working with Peter Mbwamba and George um, Nigandu on a PowerShell set of SDKs that essentially is doing that same stuff. Now, to install this, you basically run that command inside your PowerShell window. You would not do it from this PowerShell, though. You do need to be in the new PowerShell 7 because that will essentially not work in that instance. And what we all you need to do to get started is basically run um, a connect to graph command um, and you just need to tell it what scopes you want. Now, I'm already signed in here. If you weren't signed in, it would prompt you to sign in. And I can do some really neat things like I can run through and get those service principles. So for that same ID here, this is for the graph explorer ID. I can run this command um, and see, look, that's the graph explorer service principle. That's the graph explorer. Um, 
That's the Graph Explorer app, app ID. And then if I run this one, effectively the OAuth 2 permission grants for that same uh, service principal ID, not the app ID, the object ID. Um, and I'm just going to filter the list for just the scope. I can write out what those scopes are for Graph Explorer here too. And so this is a, you know, again, you can write PowerShell scripts and do all this stuff really well. Um, so if you haven't used the PowerShell stuff yet, definitely get going with it just by doing install dash module Microsoft Graph. Um, we've had some awesome feedback. We have open sourced yep. it. We are capturing issues there, which is really, really cool. And yeah, so, if you're someone like me who does a lot of samples and has to make a lot of app IDs all the time, like having a script like this on your desktop that just automatically spits one out is totally. so handy. You know, I don't have to go to the portal at all to do any of this stuff anymore. And and so the nice thing is, is that, you know, <clears throat> I can go through and create my own one. Like it's not just about gets, you know, to service principles and grants. I can actually go run a new one here. And we've got some samples in there um, where, you know, <clears throat> I'm creating the application display name. For our particular app, we are using implicit flow because we're on the client in the browser. So we need to enable those two check marks. And <clears throat> in this case, we've got like a web redirect URL here that I'm setting up, which is our local uh, that we're running. We're going to need to tweak to add ngrok to later on. And just by running that, that's making a call to the graph to go register and create that application. Um, and then once that magically has appeared, we're good. And so the scenarios I see this being super powerful for is like CI CD, where maybe you want to tear down applications and create them in your dev environments. Um, you, you're making changes to configuration of how you're creating the application. Maybe you've realized you need to add a new web redirect URL. You can write scripts to do this stuff and have it kind of create it and tear it down when you want to pull it away into whatever environment you're in. So this is super useful. And again, if I go over to, um, so here into my app registrations, because I've created that application inside of this tenant, you'll see now that the Thakey test app is there with uh, my application ID and, and we're good to go. Um, and so that just kind of highlights how simple the setup of this yeah. is. I mean, I've walked through it to show you how you're probably familiar with it, with the graph. But how Explorer. do you get the client ID from the PowerShell though? You didn't show that part. <clears throat> oh, I didn't. So yeah. We, we're wonderful PowerShell skills here. We're passing whatever was created directly into app three. And so I can just simply come in here and just do app ID and get that out, right? And so right. I can copy this over here and then I'll go over to Skype and I'm gonna pass the bouncy ball to you, uh, Beth, because we need to start building the app. We've, we're half an hour in, we've shown a lot of PowerShell code and app ID code, but um, we need to actually start building this damn thing out and um, show some real JavaScript code and whether people think that's real or not. React is real. 